Hello, my name's Dana and here is some of my work. And as you know from the title, this is about the basics of shoe covering. So I hope that showing this to you adds some credibility. I'm gonna divide this up into four sections or four modules. So along with that is a recurring theme of keeping costs low. That's the idea behind it because if you're just getting started, if you're just approaching the basics, you don't need to invest a lot of money. Module one materials that are needed. Very simple, very basic. So I use Mod Podge. This is a brand and they have about 15, 16 or 17 different kinds. And I adhere the fabric to the shoe this way. This is the matte finish and this is the fabric finish. And I also somewhere have the one that you can put a shiny gloss over top, but that's for other projects. I don't do that with shoes typically. But anyway, this is really popular, really affordable. They make them in all different sizes. Very simple. This is at Walmart. Um, I usually get it from, from Michael's, but it's at Next, Walmart. Next, you will need to make sure you have some shears, some scissors, and they need to be sharp. And a good way to test that out is to cut or try at least to cut the tip of fabric. If you're able to cut the fabric, excuse me, with the tip of the scissors, they're sharp. If you're not able to do that and the fabric just folds, they're not sharp enough. So they must be sharp shears where you can cut. You don't need to invest a lot. But for me, I, I probably would not pay less than maybe, I don't know, $12. A paintbrush. So a brush uh, that would allow you to adhere the paint or the adhesive, whatever kind you use, I'd stick with Mod Podge, onto the shoe. And you get what you pay for. So while we're staying within a budget, I would not go and try to find the cheapest thing out there and this is this is why they sell brushes in stores arts and crafts stores that or even walmart wherever target several different brush sizes will come in one package and the whole pack will be just about five dollars really really affordable but the problem is those bristles they're very cheap they're cheaply inserted into the brush and they come off when you're trying to brush the glue onto the shoe or if you're trying to brush the shoe uh put a gloss on top of the shoe or to seal the edges that's the last thing you need are the bristles falling off i've made all the mistakes for you so you don't have to make them and i'm telling you investing just a little more not a lot into your brushes will make a difference and you only really need one one about this size will do the job of covering shoes Last you forever so you got your brush and lastly which one y'all has oh there it is uh a precision razor and it has a protective cover on it and this allows you to after you've glued the fabric on uh just cut the fabric away the excess fabric that you don't need and so it looks just like that it'll be in the same section as probably the same area with the scissors that's it module two i don't have my shoes oh this module two, shoes, your foundation, your canvas. So you can use an older shoe that you already have. I mean, you can buy a new shoe. I wouldn't buy a really expensive one if you were going to do that. Whatever shoe you want to use. I have two pairs of shoes here. These are suede and these are leather. Either one will work or pleather. That will work as well. And I think a, a lot of... Um, different platforms and videos I've seen very rarely do I see people covering suede shoes or shoes you know made of a cloth porous material uh, with cloth cloth but it can be done so as far as the wear and tear on the shoe I would not use a shoe let me move some of this out of the way oh goodness I would not use a shoe that has a lot of wear and tear and this is why you need your canvas to be fairly smooth imperfections beneath the shoe can show through certain fats because this is your foundation. Your foundation's gotta be good. This is what you are working with. It can have a little bit of, of wear. You can have shoes that you've broken in, but if it has a lot of wear, I wouldn't do it. If it looks like it belongs in the trash can, sis, put it there. Module three, fabrics. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about fabrics. Like I said, this is basic, brief, just an overview. I can go into a lot more detail in another video, but let's just start with the basics. So I'll tell you what I like to use. I like to use 100% cotton. That's my preference. 
uh, especially for the bright, vibrant spring and summer, summer colors and the matte, soft, girly finish that they leave, that cotton leaves. I, I like that. I'm really not into the synthetic looking shine that can be on the cheaper blends. Um, you certainly wouldn't use nylon or something crazy like terry cloth, but what is it? A uh, uh, polyester, for example. A lot of those have a really, really shiny blend. Some some can, can be workable, but I like to use cotton. Okay, so there are three ways that you can go about getting the fabric that you need for your shoes. So A, you can buy fabric by the cut, buy it by the yard, and that uh, will cost a little more and ideally what we're going for is something that's really budget friendly but you can buy it by the yard on average any fabric that I like um, this is by the yard is anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars and you'll end up with a lot more fabric than you need that's the downside of buying by the yard um, but you can get creative you can cover a bag and a clutch maybe a wallet a belt along with it so no way I did a video where I did a set of items but if you would subscribe and put your notification bells on, you'll see that video. So these are cut by the yard. That's the first way you could do that. The second way, you can buy fabric by the square. And it comes already cut. I actually purchased a lot of these. This fabric was that shoe. It created that the cover for this shoe. And I'd say looking at these, ideally, me at some point, I would have never assumed that this would work on a shoe that it could look soft and feminine and elegant. I would have said this looks like, you know, a uh, clover from the 70s. I love the 70s. They start as cheap as 97 cents and they go up to maybe a dollar 47, sometimes $2, or you can get a, a slightly uh, longer piece of fabric for about four or five dollars. So that's your second way that you can go about getting fabric. And I will say this, if you get the squares of fabric, spring and summer options are the majority of what is available. Things that would be applicable, that would work with fall fashion, winter fashion, the colder seasons, not so much. So uh, while that is really, really affordable, it's very quick, it's fast and it's easy, there aren't a whole bunch of options for the colder seasons. And this is when using an actual garment, which is the third way you can you you can um, you know come up with the fabric that you want to use for your shoe is to use an actual garment. Here's the sleeve. So I did that with that shoe. And so when it comes to fall colors, deeper, warmer patterns with with their burgundies and your reds and mustard yellows and browns, a lot of times those aren't available in the squares. So module four, be patient with yourself. Uh, you may mess up. It might not be perfect, but I just, I wouldn't rush. I would be patient. I would understand that maybe first time around, uh, you know, that, that shoe is the guinea pig and just, you know, take your time, go slowly and you'll learn as you go. Won't be perfect in the beginning. I still mess up. You know, I do. <laughs> Sometimes I'm moving just a little too quickly, but I have fun. I just like to do it for myself. And all right. Bye ladies. See you next time.